So Formlabs has just released a video where they're showing off their new automation ecosystem, which is a set of printers that are able to produce large numbers of parts in an automatic fashion. So we're, in this video, we're gonna go through the details of that new system, what it kind of means for the industry, what it looks like it's able to do, and then talk about what kind of products can actually be made from it and how people can actually design for it. If you're new to the channel, we'd really appreciate it if you can subscribe down below. We do both news content and content around mass production 3D printing. So if you want to see more, we publish every Tuesday and Saturday. But on to Formlabs. So the Formlabs automation ecosystem. It is composed of a basically standard Formlabs resin 3D printer that has its UV protective hood actuated so that it can raise when a part or a bed of parts is completed. That bed of parts is then removable and has been modified so that it can flex to remove parts into a bin. And it has had its tanks increased so that large jugs of resin can be used to continuously refill the bed as parts are printed and has its own pumping mechanism in order to enable that. Overall, this is a way to allow the printers to run continuously without any sort of major stops. Now, Formlabs is billing this as a production system, but it's really not. Even within their own demo, they have eight machines running 24 hours, and they make 535 parts that are all about yay big. That's not terribly impressive rates, um, but it does seem to be set up more for mass prototyping rather than actual mass production of a particular part. While resin has its place in mass production, this doesn't seem to be the actual solution. But... The way it's set up is the software allows multiple users to get access to the printers so that many engineers around a company or different departments within a company are able to use the same bank of 3D printers and those printers can run 24 seven, banging out the individual parts that those individual people might need. So it's not really a means of serial production so much as a means of just very efficient prototyping within an organization, which makes sense because that is what Formlabs has done historically. But there are a few weird things about the technical aspects of this system. Within the video itself, there's actually no stage where you actually see the parts get cleaned. Uh, throughout the entire demo video, they are dry and don't appear to have any resin. This is very likely because that's just how the video had to be filmed and edited and released. Um, the tubs or the bins that the parts are being dropped into also have a wire rack, which is generally used for washing uh, and pulling parts out of a liquid bath to remove the resin. So it's likely that these bath, these tubs are meant to be baths that the parts then drop into. That would explain why the parts fall onto kind of a trap door, the bed go is returned, and then the trap door opens and the parts fall into the bin. That could be to prevent splashing. However, that is not clear and is not definite. Uh, it looks like Formlabs probably released the system a little bit earlier than they anticipated in order to get the hype from CES going on this week. Overall, the system actually looks kind of half-baked just in general, not only in the fact that there's not actually a resin washing component to it anywhere, but the actuators on the back of the machines are actually low-grade actuators that you can buy for like 20 bucks from Amazon, which is fine. There's no reason to use expensive components, but it's not to the quality of what like Formlabs machines themselves generally are or Formlabs systems. And then the rest of the system, even the racking of it all seems very prototype-ish, rather than being a final finished system. So it's likely that Formlabs is releasing this in order to test the waters, see if people are interested in this system, and then move it into production and an actual finished product that people can get a hold of. But that all being said, this system looks like a step backwards overall for Formlabs. Five years ago, they released the Form Cell, and the Form Cell was a fully automated bank of 3D printers. And rather than having the printers each have an individual mechanism for part removal, there was a single actuator that would move between the printers, remove the bed, take it to the washing station, and place a fresh bed on the machine. That is a better system. It has fewer components that go wrong. It is easily more scalable because you could theoretically have a warehouse full of machines with a robot arm up running up along it. So it seems that Formlabs is actually backing off from mass production and instead creating this small scale kind of small business prototyping workflow. So it looks like it's not meant to be deployed as a fleet, it's meant to be deployed as one or two machines that are just able to now run continuously. And this is sort of sad. At Slant3D, we're focused on mass production. So we love when somebody is going for mass production, com competition with injection molding, large scale production. But that is super challenging, especially for 3D printing systems. Not only because of the certain technical challenges that exist within it, 
but the market demand challenges. There is not a demand for mass production 3D printing, largely because 3D printing does not market itself as such, but those people who make the decisions around mass production don't know how to think of 3D printing as a mass production option. You use printing for prototyping, and then you go to molds. That's incorrect. 3D printing can scale up into hundreds of thousands, if not millions of parts, and save millions of dollars in tooling and warehousing costs. But that hasn't sunk into the wider industry, and the 3D printing industry is just simply meeting the demands of customers, which is they want more efficient prototyping so that they can get iterations out more quickly and then move those into mass production. And this seems to be indicative of that situation. It's unfortunate because 3D printing is capable of so much more and is able to affordably produce parts at massive scales, but customers don't know how to design parts for the process or how to design business processes around the process in order to really take advantage of it the way they need to. So overall, the automation ecosystem is fine, but it's not revolutionary, it's not a big innovation. Heck, auto ejection has existed in all kinds of other processes for years. This is a video of ours from half a decade ago, but it's good that they're pushing in that direction and continuing to present products so that as more people start to consider 3D printing for mass production, there's an option that lets them put their toe in the water test it out before they dive into full mass production using large factories like Slant3D or other large print farms or print systems that exist out there in the world. Thanks everybody for watching that video. Please give it a like and comment down below any other topics or pieces of news or parts of mass production 3D printing or product design and manufacturing that you'd like us to take a look at. Have a great day everybody.